So you get a true statement out of that. Yes, no? Yes. Mm -hmm. Do you see where those numbers came from? Mm -hmm. How do you add the negative 8? Is 2 negative 6 plus negative 2? Yeah. Yeah, negative 8, negative 5, negative 1. We multiply those things because we are multiplying. You're going to get negative 40. That, of course, is less than 0. That makes a true statement for the interval. Check the remaining three of them for me, okay? Okay, now come back up here. Let's see what happens with these, these remaining points. Hopefully you were able to check these. If we plug in negative 2, hopefully you have this on your paper. You got negative 4 times negative 1 times 3. Did you all make it that far? Mm -hmm. Hey, what's a negative times a negative times a positive? It's a positive, right? Negative times a negative times a positive. That's two negatives. That's going to create a positive for you. You're going to get positive 12 is less than or equal to 0. Is that true or false? I need more participation than that. Twelve is twelve less than zero? No, no. No, definitely not. We just checked negative two. It was definitely a false statement. Now you're gonna check zero. I'm gonna kind of do these on just in our heads here. If we check zero, you're gonna get negative two times positive one times positive five. Are you with me on that? Negative 2 times positive times, is that a positive or a negative? Negative. Good, negative. Do you see how the signs are what is important for this problem? Do you see that? Because already it's, it's comparing to 0 over here. So you're just checking whether it's positive or negative, basically. This is going to be negative 10 less than or equal to 0. Is that true or false for this one? True. And lastly, we'd have 3. If you check 3, If you check three, I'll do it up here, you'll get one times four times eight. You see where the one times four times eight is coming from, folks? Mm -hmm. You're gonna get thirty-two. Is third positive thirty-two? Is positive thirty-two less than or equal to zero? No. It's false. So what it comes down to is checking points. That's all this is about. Now, can you write the intervals in interval notation? How many intervals worked? So write those intervals out, and we're done. So our intervals over here are, where's the first interval start, ladies and gentlemen? Negative infinity. Where's the first interval stop? Negative 5. Wait, bracket where? On the right. On the 5. How about the infinity? You always use parentheses for infinities because you don't know what infinity is, so you can't ever get there. And then what should I have next? You, so I need that little union thing. And then where's the next interval start? Bracket one. one. So bracket, yes, absolutely, I heard that. Where's it end? Two. Two. Bracket. Anything else? New. No. Negative infinity to negative five, not negative six, negative five. Negative one to negative two, you're done. By show of hands, how many people feel okay with, with this one? Yes? You guys over here? Okay. Now, the last thing we've got to talk about is rational inequalities. Now, I know these things don't look the best. They don't look the best, but I'm going to prove to you that it's actually not that bad. Here's what you're going to do. What you're going to do. You're going to set both the numerator 
and denominator equal to zero. Set both the numerator and denominator equal to zero. What that means up here is we're going to get x minus 3 equals 0. We're going to get x plus 5 equals 0. Do you notice how I'm just setting the x minus the, the top, just set the top equal to 0, set the bottom equal to 0. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. Can you solve those? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, absolutely. This is going to give you 3. This is going to give you a negative 5. And guess what we do now? Yeah, we have exactly the same situation that we have over here. So is it, is it harder to deal with these fractions? No, it's, it's not harder. They're, they're done for you already. Um, you're going to set this top part, zero. Bottom part, zero. Put it on a number line. Of course, you're going to have negative five, and you're going to have three. You're still going to check some points. You're going to probably check negative six, zero, and four. But just be careful, because you have fractions now. You with me on that? You got fractions, so be careful on checking your signs. I'll do all these with you. With negative six, you'd have negative six minus three over negative six plus five. Negative six minus three over negative six plus five, that's negative nine over negative one. Are you following me here, folks? Yeah. How much is negative nine over negative one? Nine. Wait, positive or negative? Positive. That's where you got to be careful. You have to follow your signs down. Make sure you know a negative over negative is a positive. That gives you nine. Is nine less than or equal to zero? No, that's false. How about zero? So zero minus three over 0 plus 5. Notice here we're going to get negative 3 over 5. Negative 3 over 5. Is that a positive or a negative? Negative. So negative 3 fifths, is that less than or equal to 0? Yes. yes. Sure, it's a fraction, but you really don't care what the value of the fraction is. You just care if it's positive or negative because you're comparing it to 0. So in this case, we're going to go, yeah, that's true. Last one, if we check 4. If we check 4, you're going to get, I'll do it right here, Check out four. You're going to get one ninth. You see how we're getting one ninth? Mm -hmm. I want you to also notice the relationship. This is nine. This is one ninth. Both positive though. Why? Because you have a negative over negative or a positive over positive. This is going to be less than or equal to zero. Is one ninth less than or equal to zero? No. No, one ninth is a positive number. It, it's little, but it's a positive number. That means this is false. How many intervals do you have that work? You have negative 5 to 3. The course will be using brackets here. And that's your solution. There's one more I'm going to show you, but I'm not going to do it with you. Yeah, but it's, it's actually not that bad. It's just one little piece of information you've got to see because it's just slightly different. And here it is. A lot of people make a mistake and they just do one value here. They do the value of 2. Do you see the value of 2 coming up on the denominator there? Unfortunately, that's not going to work for this problem because what don't you have on the side? So here's what you do. You do set it equal. <clears throat> you do set it equal. This is still going to give you... Sorry, uh, this is still going to, yeah, you, you do the denominator. This is still going to give you that value of 2. So this 2 comes from this denominator. But there's one more thing you have to do. You have to also solve that equation, which means you're going to multiply both sides by x minus 2. So you get 3 equals 2x minus 2. Notice I've just moved that off by multiplying it, and you solve that one. Once you solve that, that will give you another, uh, another solution to put on your number line. So here you get 3 equals... 2x minus 4, you add 4, 7 equals 2x, or x equals 7 over 2. That still goes on a number line. Those would be the two things you put on your number line, and then check your intervals. 
How much is 7 over 2? How much? Yeah, about three. It's three. Uh, not about. It's exactly three and a half. So not only do you set the denominator equal to zero, you also solve that equation using what you know about those rational expressions, <laughs> rational equations, and that will give you another point. How many people feel okay with with all this stuff? These are these are rare for you. How many people feel okay with this one? Okay. Good. Okay. 